Hey, it's Nathan Williams with Crazy Eye Marketing. In this video, we're gonna talk about Facebook events, and I'm gonna drop a few tips on how to get people to actually register for your event. Now, note, I am using the new Facebook, so if you're using the old Facebook, in order to change, you just go to your menu in the top right-hand corner, and there'll be an option somewhere in there that says, like, switch to new Facebook, and when you do that, you should be on a Facebook that looks something like this. It's prettier, newer, all that stuff. Anyway, you do need a Facebook page in order to post an event, so I assume you already have a page. If not, go. you can look at the description below. I have a video on how to create a Facebook page, but if we have a page and you're in the new Facebook, this is how we do it. So we come into here and we see event. So that's pretty simple, right? You click on event, and then we can go ahead and configure our event over here on the left-hand side. And as you'll notice on the right-hand side, it gives us a preview of what our event will look like. Now, since we are in the midst of a coronavirus, they do want to give me some information. I'm just going to dismiss it so it cleans things up a little bit. Uh, but we can go ahead and select whether this is an online event or an offline event. We'll pretend like it's an offline event and I'll just say that it's at the Swift Creek Middle School. That works, so select whatever you know location or enter the address that's relevant to you. And then of course you go ahead and select a start date and start time and end date and end time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. I'll just say it's the 22nd starting at midnight and it goes to the 23rd ending at midnight. So that sounds like a wild and crazy event. You could also go ahead and schedule multiple events if you want to. So you could set a different frequency, like if it's a daily event or weekly event or a custom, and then you can select different date ranges and all that type of stuff over here. So a lot of different options depending on the type of event you're setting up and if it's a recurring event or you know has unique dates already set. So you can configure it right over here. And all that's pretty self-explanatory. We can go ahead and hit save then. And now we can go ahead and name our event. So this is a demo event. And then we enter our description, description. And a quick tip right here, you wanna keep your event name and your description pretty short because first things first, people don't like to read a lot of stuff. But also, if you have it too long, like Facebook starts cutting things off or people have to click to see more and you know people aren't gonna do that. So the idea here is to be short and sweet when it comes to naming your event and when it comes to describing your event. And you can include more information within the event page itself. So you can have more details and all that type of stuff. But when it comes to setting up the event, you want the title and the description kind of short so people will read it and they don't have to click anything extra to view it. So that's a little tip right there. You can go ahead then and add a photo for your event and the photo gets added to the top of your event. Now a quick tip is to use a photo without a lot of text on it, like this photo that I'm using right now is a bad example. You want one without much text. And the reason for that is because Facebook doesn't like images with a lot of text on them. They won't promote your event if you have a bunch of text all over it. So they want like a nice image, a nice clean image without a lot of text on it. So when selecting an image, make sure that it's nice and clean without a lot of text. You can put a little call to action or something like that if you want to, but for the most part, just, just have an image. And as we scroll down here, we get into categories and this can be helpful to let Facebook know what type of event of an event this is. And also, you know, people, they browse for local events on Facebook. So they'll they'll go to whatever category you might have listed over here in order to find your event. And so of course you wanna go ahead and select the category that makes sense for your event. So that way more people can find it. Unless of course you don't want people to find your event and then you know what, that's fine as well. I'm gonna say that this is for drinks. Who doesn't like that? Now, if you're having your event with co-hosts, you can go ahead and add them to the event. And this is another great way to spread the word about your event because your event will show up on their page and under their events calendar and all that type of stuff. And so if you do have a co-host, I recommend sharing that. Alternatively, you could go ahead and tag yourself. And so that makes it easy for you to go ahead and share it with your friends. Of course, if that's something you want to do, if you don't want your friends to know you're having an event, then you don't have to add yourself. But that could be a quick, easy way to have like your friends find your event instead of them going through your page or something like that. So if co-hosts are relevant, go ahead and add them. If there's a link people need to go to in order to register for a ticket, you can go ahead and add it right here. So just for the sake of example, I'll say you gotta go to crazyeyemarketing.com for your ticket. And then we get into keywords and you wanna go ahead and select the keywords that are relevant for your event. And again, this just helps people organically find your event. So make sure you choose what is relevant. So I'm just gonna say acro dance and you can select multiple keywords if you want to. So let's see, we got acid jazz as well. And so you do wanna spend some time selecting appropriate keywords. So that way it increases your exposure and gets more people to your event. 
And then, of course, you can go ahead and select whether it's a volunteer opportunity or kid-friendly and whatnot. Of course, mine is a drinking event, so we're not going to have any children around. And you can go ahead and enable messaging if you want to. So let people ask you questions about this event over Messenger. So if you're a Messenger user, then this might be helpful, especially if you want to be engaging with your people or not. And then we have event page options like show guest lists or only admins can post an event. Uh, I recommend turning this off if you want engagement and people to be excited and also this helps spread the word. So of course this is personal preference, but if you want a lot of organic traffic, then you want as, to allow as many people as possible to start posting in here. And finally we have an option. So posts must be approved by a host or co-host before they're like on your event page. So again, if you're getting a lot of spam or something like that, you might want to turn this on, but you know, if it's people that are just excited about your event, let's let them post, right? So I'm just gonna leave it wide open and say create. And I kicked out an error message that I have to go ahead and cancel or save. So I'll hit save and now I'll hit create. And so here I am now on my event page and we can go ahead and check it out real quick. Well, notice that I do have a pending request to co-host this event. So of course, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and accept it. And then we could come in here and we have an about. So this is like the main page that people land on and they can see who's going, who's not going, all that type of stuff, find out some more information. There's also this discussion area. And I recommend being active in this area because Facebook sees this activity and it's like, oh, this is an active event. People must be excited about it, etc. And it'll promote your event a little bit more. And it's also good for people that are planning to attend the event, you know, just keep them excited and engaged and share any sort of relevant information about the event right here in the discussion area. And so of course, to do that, you just click on add a post and then you write out your post and you post just like you normally would post to Facebook. So pretty simple stuff right there. A couple other options, so interested, so you could go ahead and mark yourself as interested or going probably, be a good idea to mark yourself as going since you are hosting the event. You could also go ahead and invite people. So of course you wanna invite as many people as possible. That's relevant. You wanna invite people that would be most likely to go. But also note you only have 500 invites, which may or may not be a lot depending on who you're inviting and how many friends you have and all that type of stuff. But also your friends can invite friends to your event. So, you know, the sky's the limit if you have lots of friends that are willing to invite their friends to your event. And then of course you can go ahead and edit the event. So if you need to change anything, you just click the edit button. You can come in here and make the changes that you need to go ahead and make. So if you need to go ahead and update the description or provide some more information, you can go ahead and do that here or change the hours or location or whatever it might be. You can go ahead and make those changes. Uh, there's also this share op option so you can share it as a post or send a messenger or share it a page. And those are pretty self-explanatory options right there. And then we have this menu so we can go ahead and save the event, duplicate event, castle event, add to page, or export event. So all those are pretty self-explanatory as well. Now to get back to your event, so let's go to home real quick. And if we go to your page, so let me go to my page. And now I see on the left-hand side that I have an events option. So I can go ahead and click into here. Alternatively, I see my event over here that's posted to my page and I could click on here to get back to my event page and I'll just open it in a new tab so we can see what, see how that works. So there we go, back at my event page. And there's a couple other things I can go ahead and do with this post right here. Of course, I can like, comment, share it. So that's could be very helpful in getting even more people to see your event here. We could also go ahead and comment down here and tag people and all that type of stuff to get people to see the event. And we could also go ahead and boost the event. So if you wanna put some money behind this event, this could be a good way to do it. You just come to boost event and uh, we could choose to sell tickets so get more people to attend your event or you know increase awareness so get more interest in your event. So select what's relevant here. Uh, you could go ahead and update the description for your boost. And you could also go ahead and change your targeting options around. So if you wanna target your local area or whatever it might be. A lot of these boost options are pretty self-explanatory and I have another video on boosting posts. So if you're interested in spending money to advertise your event, check out the video down below on boosting posts. That'll be helpful for that. Uh, we'll come back out here now and cancel that ad. Uh, if I come over to events now on my left-hand menu, it shows all the events that we have going on with our particular page. Now I only have one event because I just created it. But if you had multiple events, you'd see them. you see how much money you might've spent on it, how many people have re you've reached, how many responses, how many ticket clicks, and so on. So it just gives you a breakdown of how well your events are doing and it helps you keep things organized as well. And so that's pretty much it for these events on Facebook. Again, I have several videos down below like on boosting posts. So if you wanna advertise your event, I 
I recommend checking out those other videos because they'll help you do that. Otherwise, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them down below. And if you did find this video helpful, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.